Hi, I'm Cassie with Me Time. This is a mini tutorial for the Clock Tower from the Collectible Christmas Holiday Village. The Clock Tower is the final piece to your Holiday Village and I'm so excited to talk to you about it today. Something really fun and unique about the Clock Tower is if you have a doorstep subscription, a little clock that actually works will be included in your doorstep package. However, if you are a digital subscriber, there is still a good option for you for the front. So, if you don't have that clock tower, you can have the front with just the stitching. Isn't that cute? So it still works out either way. In the instructions, you'll notice that there are actually two options for part two. Option A is the stitching that includes the ability to put in the clock. And option B is the stitching where it just stitches the clock here instead. Both are great and both are available and both will be included in your doorstep and in your delivery subscription. One other unique thing with the clock tower is because of this clock face, it's a little bit heavy. We are going to stitch a little bit of a brace in here to kind of shore this up and make sure that it doesn't concave at all. And that is actually stitched along with the roof. So I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So what we're going to stitch today is just the shape form so that you can see how it will work together with the roof. I've already hooped the light mesh cutaway stabilizer, so we're gonna put it into the machine. Today I'm going to stitch these lines with a red color thread, just for video purposes so that you can see it better. However, when you do this at home, go ahead and use a neutral colored thread. Okay, so what you can see, we stitched right now on the stabilizer. This is the box that will become your roof. And this shape right here is what's used to give that extra structure. So they're both stitched in the same place. And what you're given in your doorstep subscription is a piece of in shape form. This we can use to cover both of those pieces right now. And then we're gonna tape it in place and then we're gonna stitch those outlines. So I'm gonna put it back in the hoop and we'll stitch that right now. Okay, so what we just stitched is the tack down line for the roof and those scoring guides as well as the inside structure shape. Isn't that great that both of these fit on the single piece of shape form? So now what we get to do is we're going to cut around both pieces, both the inside structure and the structure for the roof. So after we have it all trimmed, it's going to look like this. You're going to have your roof here and the inside structure here. So this inside structure, you're just going to leave there. It's just gonna hang out on the stabilizer while you do all of your stitching for your roof. When you're finished with your roof, then you can cut them both out together. Okay, so now that you have your roof all stitched, this is all that you have left for the inside structure. So we're just going to take our scissors and we're going to cut right next to it and just remove the excess stabilizer. Now this is digitized so that it fits nicely inside of your structure. So if there's any extra shape form, you can kind of remove it. You wanna be very close to that stitch line. And this, you can see, has the shape of where the clock is going to be on the other side. Okay, so now that we have that ready, we're going to set it aside for a moment and we're going to stitch the front together so that you can see how it's going to work to make that spot where the clock goes inside. Okay, so to stitch the front with the ability to insert that clock, you're gonna make sure that you grab the embroidery file that is option A and load that into your machine. Then you're gonna hoop light mesh cutaway stabilizer and we're going to stitch our very first placement line. I'm gonna stick that in and I am doing that again in red just so that you can see it. But when you're doing it at home, go ahead and use a neutral colored thread. Okay, so what we just stitched was the sewing guidelines and the placement line. This outside line here is the sewing guidelines and then this inside shape here is the placement line. So we're going to take our shape form stabilizer, we're gonna completely cover that placement line and we're going to tape it securely in place. This way it won't move or wiggle while we are stitching the tack down line. Okay, 
So what we just stitched was that tack down line giving us the shape of our building, the scoring guides right here, and then our circle, which is what we're going to cut out to make our clock be able to slide into this building. Isn't that fun? So first we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut around the edge, then we'll get our rotary cutter and we'll cut the scoring guides and then I'm gonna show you how to cut out this circle. So let's get to it. So now that we have cut all the way around our shape form and the scoring guides, it's now time to cut out that circle. So we're going to use our favorite tool, which is our seam ripper. And we're going to stick that just next to the stitch line. And same thing, we're going to poke it in, making sure that we grab both the stabilizers and that we have it at about a 40 degree angle. And because it's a circle, we're gonna be rotating and cutting at the exact same time. So let's do it. So we're gonna slowly rotate at the same time. I'm rotating my hoop in the opposite direction that I'm cutting and we're gonna glide our seam ripper around in that circle and making sure that we stay nice and close. I'm gonna continue all the way around until we get to where we started and ta-da, pop it right out. Look at that, pretty easy peasy. All right, now we're going to forget about this circle where the clock is gonna go for a little while and we're gonna do all of the stitching and then we're gonna to return to it closer to the end. We're gonna take this and put it in the machine and we're going to stitch our placement line for our fabric. At this point, I'm going to switch out my thread so that we don't have it on our final stitch out. Okay, so what we just stitched was the placement line for our fabric. So we're going to take that right now, and this is already starched and pressed and ready to go. And we're gonna place it completely covering that placement line, making sure that we have at least a quarter inch on all sides. Now, something to remember, because I did use that dark red thread, you're gonna see some of that shining through my fabric, which is why we would rather you use a neutral thread for those steps, but I wanted to make sure you could see what I was doing really well. So we're just going to ignore the red thread a little. So again, I like to make sure I tape it good on the top, smooth my fabric down, and then tape it on the bottom. Because this is a wider piece of fabric, I wanna make sure that I put plenty of tape to hold it in place. So I'm putting two pieces of tape on the top and the bottom and on the sides. So again, making sure it's nice and flat. And held securely. All right, and now that I got it all taped in place, we're gonna return it to the machine for the tack down line. Machine step four is stitching the tack down line. Machine step five is stitching the decorative lights detail. We're going to go ahead and change our thread and stitch that right now. Machine step six is stitching the window stitch lines. Okay, now that we've stitched our window stitch line, we're gonna take our seam ripper and we're going to cut out the window. We're gonna just put it in the bottom and glide it up to our curve, rotate our hoop, go around the curve, rotating as we go, and then go back down the other side and stop. Then we're going to stick it back in, make sure we have our angle correct, and we're going to take that last bit out. All right, and that's really easy. There's only one window this time. So we'll just remove all of that inside there. I like to double check that I don't have any extra threads hanging out. And then we can put the chiffon on the back. So I have starched my chiffon thoroughly and I'm gonna take my iron and just quickly give it a nice press. This way my chiffon lays nice and flat and won't wiggle so much for me. So we're gonna make sure that it's feeling nice and dry after we super soaked it with our starch. And then we'll be ready to stick it on our building. We're gonna flip our hoop over and you do have quite a large piece 
because that's what comes in your kit. So there's plenty extra if you ever need to use it for another house or for something else. We're gonna tape it securely in place. Make sure that it's completely covering that window. And I'm just gonna tape some of this extra because I do not want it to come and bunch on me. Then we're gonna return it to the hoop and we're going to stitch the satin outline for the window and the grids. Now that we've stitched the window grid and satin outline, we're going to stitch the placement line for the door. This is in our light brown color. All right, so what we just stitched here was the door placement line. So we're going to take our door fabric and we're going to cover it completely and make sure that we tape it securely in place so that our door doesn't shift on us when we're stitching the tack down line. We're gonna keep our brown colored thread in and we're gonna return this to the hoop for the tack down line for the door. Okay, now that we have stitched the tack down line for our door, we can remove the tape and use our scissors and cut really close. We wanna cut close because we don't want the fabric sticking out after we do the satin outline stitch. So we're gonna cut it. Just like that. All right, and we're gonna remove all that extra fabric and tape. And then we're gonna put it back into our machine so that we can do the satin outline stitch for the door. Machine step 11 is stitching the doorknobs. Machine step 12 is stitching the flower accent petals. Machine step 13 is stitching the braces for the peak on the house. Okay, machine step 14 is stitching the floor divider bars and the decorative dots. So we're gonna quick change our thread and then we'll do it. Machine step 15 is stitching the floor divider lines. We're gonna change our thread really quick and then we'll stitch it. Machine step 16 is stitching the fold line. Machine step 17 is stitching the clock lining placement line. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out for just a second so you can see some of the beautiful stitching that we've been doing and so I can show you this placement line. This placement line is stitched right around where we cut out that stabilizer for the clock and it is in just a little bit so your cut line that you cut should actually be just outside of this line and that's how it's supposed to be, so it's all good. Then we're gonna take our already starched fabric and we're gonna completely cover that placement line and we're going to tape it in place. Just one on the top and one in the bottom will do. And then we're gonna stick it back in the machine for the tack down line. Okay, so now we're going to remove the tape and then we're gonna have a little bit of fun. And this is the exciting part because it's all about inserting that clock. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take our seam ripper and we're gonna puncture just a little bit of a hole in here and you're cutting both layers of fabric. We're gonna cut a slit and then we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna go in and we're gonna cut fairly close to the tack down line. And we're just removing the extra fabric for bulk purposes so that it's not hanging out there and so that it will allow us to insert that clock. So we're gonna just cut around in a circle about, and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna just clip little clips so that this will bend really nicely for us. The snip scissors work really well for this. And we're gonna try really hard not to cut the stitch line while we're snipping all these bits here. Okay, and then the fun part. What we're going to do is, well, we're gonna take it out of the hoop first, now that we have it all clipped. 
remove all that tape. And having it out of the hoop will really help with this part. So we're gonna take the fabric and we're going to push it all inside. And this is gonna create a really nice finished edge for us. We're gonna flip it upside down and we're going to push the fabric nice and straight as we can. And we're going to take it over here and we're gonna starch it. So I'm gonna pull this a little bit closer so that you can see all of our fabric pulled up nice and taut. Give it a little starch. And then we're gonna take our iron and we're gonna press it so that our fabric stays really nice in the back, exactly where we want it to stay. And the starch helps it stay in place. Super fun, okay. And then to just ensure that it stays there, we're going to take our favorite glue and we're gonna just add a little bit behind here and press it down so that it keeps that lining fabric in place. And we're gonna allow that glue to dry and then I'm gonna show you how to insert the clock. So for those of you who are Door Set Up subscribers, you're going to get a clock in your box. There's a little plastic ring around this and this is just for shipping purposes. So before we push it into our wall, we're going to pull that little plastic bit off. It looks just like this, just a little plastic ring. And you can go ahead and toss that out because you're not gonna need it anymore. So normally you'd have your whole building all constructed and embroidered and ready to go waiting for the roof and the clock. But I'm leaving mine off so that you can see what I'm doing. So right here, we're going to take our clock and we're gonna make sure that we get the 12 o'clock in the right place. And this is how you insert it. It's a simple, just press inside. And because of the fabric and the way it's digitized, it'll stay nice and straight. Okay, so this is the part I wanted to leave it open for so that you can see. Remember this little structure piece that we made at the very beginning of the video. This is something that once you have your front and your back sewn together, but before you put the roof that you will insert. So what you're going to do, I have my little open face here so that you can see how it's going to work. We're going to take this and you're going to push it in and you're going to slide it down to about this point right here. We want most of the clock visible. So I'm going to show it to you just from this angle too. You're going to take it and slide it to about right here. Most of the clock underneath and just a little bit above. Okay. And it's about the 10 and 2. So you're going to line it up right about the 10 and 2 place. And then once you have it where it needs to go, you're going to take some hot glue and just hot glue around the edges there, just so you can kind of see. And then after that's all set, you can put on your roof and finish out your building. So now that you have your clock tower constructed and you have the support beam in place, you can barely see it just there. You're going to take your clock and make sure it's the right direction. We can just press it in. There's plenty of room because of how we placed that structure to put your hand in there and you just pop it inside and you're good to go. Thank you so much for joining me today for this mini tutorial about the clock tower from the Collectible Christmas Holiday Village. Please make sure to like and subscribe and follow us for more content. And in the meantime, go enjoy some well-deserved me time.